If you're out there using a Keurig or another conventional coffee pot, you might want to think again because they are one of the most toxic ways to make coffee. And while my water's heating up here on the kettle, I'm going to explain to you why and show you a healthier alternative to do. So we have a couple different components when it comes to Keurigs and conventional coffee pots. We have the coffee maker itself, and then we have the K-cups and the Nespresso aluminum pods. Let's break each one of these down individually. When we start with the coffee maker itself, this is a breeding ground of mold and other bacteria because you have a lot of stagnant water sitting inside the reservoir. And in a 2011 study, researchers found that 50% of all coffee pots have mold in them, most predominantly the coliform bacteria, which are pretty toxic to the human body. And we know that exposure to mold, not just in acute instances, but over a long period of time can result in a lot of negative health issues. But not just the coffee maker itself, but K-cups and Nespresso pods come with a host of health issues themselves. I mean, ranging from the environmental impact that the K-cups have to the plastics, the aluminum, and the quality of coffee itself. But when we're just talking about the environmental impact of K-cups, in 2013 alone, there was over 8 billion K-cups sold just under the K-cup brand name. I mean, there's, of course, a lot of other off-brands, but there was over 8 billion K-cups sold, and this was the amount to stretch around the earth over 10 and a half times. Even John Sylvan, the inventor of Keurig and the K-Cups, he even said to The Atlantic that he regrets inventing these K-Cups and the machines because of the environmental impact. He said, quote, I feel bad sometimes that I ever even invented the K-Cup. I don't have one. They're kind of expensive to use. Plus, it's not like drip coffee is tough to make. But not only are they completely wasteful, but they're usually made out of plastic and or aluminum, and these both have a lot of negative health consequences. There was a recent study that found that just a one liter of a plastic water bottle can contain over 240,000 microplastic particles and over 90% of them are nanoplastics. And that plastic water bottle isn't even heated like these K-cups are. And we know that microplastics come with a host of health issues. Once you ingest them, you can't eliminate them from the body. I mean, they are associated and known to be causal of so many different health conditions. We're talking cancer, dementia, autoimmunity, thyroid problems, and a ton more health conditions. So when you're heating water up to almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit and it's passing through these plastic K-cups, you are leaching plastic particles into your coffee and you are getting micro doses of these things every single day. And that could be a potential problem. Now, listen, it's your health, it's your choice, but I just want to give you the facts so that way you can make the informed decision yourself. This isn't telling you that you need to avoid these things. It's just letting you know that there's potential risk and there's healthier and pretty convenient ways to make this yourself. Now, one of the last things that is a major issue with these K-cups or Nespresso pods, they're starting to use aluminum now because they know how problematic plastic can be, but aluminum comes with a host of health issues itself. When you're putting hot liquids like you're doing in Keurigs or Nespresso machines, when you're putting hot liquids through aluminum, this also leaches into your coffee and overexposure to aluminum has also been associated and known to be causal of so many other health conditions. I'm gonna list a list of studies right here on the screen and you'll be able to see just how problematic aluminum can be for the human body. Now, not to mention, usually the quality of coffee that is coming in these pods is pretty low quality. I mean, coffee is one of the most heavily sprayed crops in our world world today. It's sprayed with pesticides, fungicides, herbicides. It's one of the most heavily sprayed crops and we're ingesting that. But even if it's organic, that doesn't mean a whole lot because coffee tends to mold easily. It gets moisture in it. And a study found that about 50%, a little bit more, depending on if it's decaf or caffeinated coffee and the sourcing, about 50% of all coffee has exposure to mold, specifically aflatoxin and ochratoxin A. These are known to be neurotoxins to the human body and these come with a host of health problems themselves. But you can rest assured that if you are drinking out of pretty much any random K-cup or Nespresso pot that hasn't been mold tested, that hasn't been given the organic label, even if it has the organic label, it could still contain mold because they're not tested. They're just testing for pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, but it can still contain mold depending on how it's packaged. But you can rest assured that 50% of all conventional coffees out there contain some form of mold. Now, companies have started to become aware of all of this and they started to make stainless steel 
little K-cups or more paper filtered K-cups that are more environmentally friendly and less toxic than plastic and aluminum. So if you're not ready to give up your Keurig machine, you can use those. But again, the coffee maker itself is a breeding ground for mold. So you got to religiously be cleaning it and using maybe vinegar to get some of that out of there. And if you're not cleaning it regularly, you can be sure that there's probably some mold in your coffee pot and that's coming into your coffee maker. But if you want to try switching it up, I've been using these methods here since 2015 when I started drinking coffee. So come with me. I'm going to show you a healthier way pretty much the original methods of how to make coffee. This is how I've been making coffee since 2015. And this is how I make it every single morning. You can get a French press. This is like 20 bucks. You can go to TJ Maxx. You can go to virtually any store. You can get it on Amazon, maybe 20 bucks. This is just glass and stainless steel. This is probably the easiest way. You can grind your beans fresh and put it in here and just throw maybe two or three tablespoons of coffee beans in there and just fill it up. You can look up some ratios online or in the description below. That's probably your easiest way because glass and stainless steel is the way to go. Now, my preferred way is to use a pour over method because you can control it a little bit more. It's not as strong as the French press. I have a couple different favorites of pour over that I like. This one is a little bit different than the Chemex here, but both are my preferred way to make it. Now, if you're looking for the healthiest way to make a cup of coffee, this is how we're going to do it. So we're first going to start off by using a kettle and you don't need to get one this fancy. You don't need to have all this fancy equipment, but this is just how you do it. I'm going to first start off with some high quality filtered water. I'm using reverse osmosis filtered water from my machine here. So this is filtering out virtually everything. I add just a couple drops of minerals back into it, filled it up here in my stainless steel kettle. So then I'm going to grab my Chemex with a unbleached paper filter. That's what these tan ones are. And to start making a really high quality cup of coffee, I'm just going to strain this out because it gets it's rid of the paper taste and it'll heat up the Chemex. So that way it keeps your coffee a little bit hotter as you're making it. I just do a little bit of that. And just kind of let that sit for maybe 30 seconds and then I'm going to dump that out in the sink. So now if you really want to make sure that you're dialing in your coffee routine, again, this takes me about five to 10 minutes in the morning. You know, I got this on a cycle. It doesn't take much longer than a typical Keurig would, but next you're just going to get a scale and this will help you weigh out your beans to coffee ratio. So I'm going to sit my Chemex on here and then I'm going to tear it. And I heated my water up to 202 degrees Fahrenheit, typically anything less than 205 degrees. You don't want it boiling. You want it a little bit off a of boil. That way it doesn't burn the coffee beans and you get a nice taste out of your your coffee. So typically what I'll do with my beans is I will grind them fresh and there's different settings. You can grind them on a coarse setting or a fine setting, depending on if you're doing a French press, you would grind them a little more coarse. But since I'm using a pour over, I'm going to be on a medium setting and I would grind them fresh every morning, but I have some freshly ground for you here right now. And now we're just going to measure out maybe about 30 grams of ground coffee here in my Chemex. You go over a little bit, that's all right too. And so the nice thing about these airscape containers is it keeps the coffee fresh. It doesn't allow them to mold. It keeps the moisture and the sunlight from getting to it. That way, you know, you're not getting mold and your mold tested coffee. Hopefully you're using a high quality coffee. So that way you can just keep it pretty fresh in here. So once we have our ground coffee already weighed out, then we're going to tear it again back to zero. And that's when we are going to begin pouring over. Now this is going to happen pretty quick. It takes two to three minutes. Again, this whole process takes me about five minutes, maybe 10 at most in the morning depending on how much I'm taking, but we weighed out 30 grams of coffee beans. And what we're going to do is 15 to one ratio. That's what I like. You can do give or take. People like to do different, but I like to do 15 grams water to one gram of coffee beans. So what we're first going to start off by doing is just doing a little bit of a bloom. And as you can see, I'm just doing a little bit pre-wetting the coffee beans and not doing too much. And as you can see in here, the coffee is kind of bubbling up this is off gassing a lot of the carbon dioxide in there and that is allowing it to be fresh. And I just give that maybe 20 seconds to allow the carbon dioxide to off gas. And even on my scale here, it has a timer and then I can press and just keep track of the time if you really want to get serious about your coffee. So now that it's been about 20 seconds, we're just going to have a nice steady pour in our coffee and you can control the flow rate. You don't want to go super fast. You just want to make sure that you're just covering the beans a little bit at a time. And listen, I started this back in 2015 and I'm not a pro by any means, but this is just how I do it. And I've noticed that I can really enjoy the taste of my coffee. I can tell a difference when I get this compared to Starbucks or Keurig machine or whatever. It's it, You can really control the flow rate here because of how much you're pouring. You can stop and allow the coffee to drip down. And you can control exactly how much water you're putting in. 
So I put in 31 grams of coffee, ground coffee. So that means if I'm doing 15 to one, I'm gonna do 450 total grams of coffee. So this is just a nice steady pour. We're about halfway, we're a little over a minute in. And what we're doing here, I mean, this coffee is coming in contact with the glass. We're using filtered water that's been heated with a stainless steel kettle. We're using a non-chlorinated paper filter. And these coffee beans are some of the highest quality coffee beans that you can get. Organic, preferably mold tested. There's great companies out there that test for mold, aflatoxins, ochratoxin A, and a nice steady pour. This should take no more than three minutes. And again, you don't need to have a crazy setup like this. Like I mentioned, just using a glass stainless steel French press will do, but your biggest thing is just using glass. We're not trying to use any plastic. We're not trying to use aluminum. We're just really trying to use the highest quality things that we can because this is how coffee's really been made for as long as coffee has existed. You know, you just use water and materials from nature. This is better for the environment. It's more reusable and it's healthier for your body as well. So as we're finishing our pour here, we're reaching 452. It doesn't need to be perfect. And this is how I make my coffee for myself and my wife. Every morning, we've been doing this for years. And again, this is something that I've personally found great enjoyment in. This is a nice morning routine, a morning ritual for me. It's something that I wake up looking forward to every single morning. I come out, let my dogs out, take them for a walk sometimes. And I like to come out here and make this first thing in the morning after I've had my water. And it's just a nice ritual. You know, if you have five minutes to make a cup of coffee in the morning. This is going to be a lot better. It allows you to wake up, allows you to kind of think a little bit. Not only is it healthier for you, healthier for the environment, but it's also just a nice ritual and it looks pretty cool too. This is how you make a really healthy cup of coffee, why I think you should ditch Keurig machines and other coffee makers and start using something a little bit more health conscious. So if you want, you can compost your coffee in your paper filter, but now it's time to drink. Grab your favorite mug and enjoy. Yeah. It's a fresh cup of coffee. Guys, if you're loving this content, be sure to leave a question or comment below. Hit that like and subscribe button because we have a lot of incredible content coming your way just like this. Be sure to send this video out to somebody that you know needs to see it most, and I'll talk to you next time.